Yo guys, what is up? Max and Ronald in a ring video, and today we're going over my strength build. Now, this is a pure strength build. We are going to be getting over 500% increased damage with our attacks, and today I want to break down all of the items that we're using, as well as because I made a brand new character for this build, and I've started from the very beginning on this character, a guide to the progression of strength builds, and some of the items that not only am I using now, but that are super important that you want to gather along your journey, different weapons that you're going to want to start working on, and the weapons you're going to transition into into later game. I want to fully cover how to get into strength and start absolutely decimating enemies. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, guys, let's get right into it. So we're going to do stats, and then gear, and then ashes of war. And then after we talk about those, we'll get into the progression of a strength build and items to look for early, as well as into the later game and where to get them. So to start us off, my stats currently are 38 vigor, 9 mind, 40 endurance, 63 strength, Dexterity is at 9, Intelligence is at 7, Faith is at 10, and Arcane is at 11. Your priorities for stats as a strength character are going to be your number one priority is strength, your number two priority is probably endurance, and your number three priority is probably be vigor. Um, I prioritize endurance over vigor because in the beginning of the game, your biggest struggle as a strength build, if you're wanting to dual wield two colossal great swords or two colossal giant hammers, is the equip load it's, it'll simply be too heavy and then you basically can't wear any armor you're gonna have to play the game naked if you want to use two giant hammers because your equip load will be too heavy so getting that endurance up will increase your equip load as well as increasing your stamina bar now the reason your stamina bar is important is because you want to be able to swing these things a few times and also dodge roll out you want to be able to get in and out and using giant weapons especially two of them will take up a lot of stamina so endurance is a big priority strength is obviously the thing that we're scaling our damage off of and then vigor uh at 38 vigor i actually haven't had any problems i haven't gotten one shot once on this playthrough um i know that the soft cap for vigor is not uh 38 so we will keep investing points there but we're still pretty early on into the game uh, strength soft cap is 55, so I'm a little bit past soft cap right now with its hard cap being 80. Um, probably going to put a little bit more points into strength, uh, but definitely getting up that endurance and that vigor. And then I, as my last stat that I'm going to increase is actually going to be faith. And we'll talk about faith in a second. But let's talk about talismans. You start the game with one talisman slot, and for that first talisman slot, I recommend the Radagon Sword Seal. When you only have one available slot, this is a great thing to use because it's going to increase your vigor, your endurance, your strength, and your dexterity. Basically, all things that you want on a melee physical build. When you unlock your second talisman slot, I recommend putting in the Claw Talisman. This will give you enhanced jump attacks for a 10% damage increase. Uh, some other early ones are like Erd Tree's Favor to increase your equip load is also very nice. Um, but we're going to get into that in a second. For our third slot, I recommend the Great Jars Arsenal. This will vastly increase your maximum equip load. It's like the Erd Tree, but just better. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the heavy equip load right now without it. As soon as I equip that Great Jars Arsenal, I'm getting a huge increase to my equip load maximum, which allows me to wear armor plus use dual hammers. And for the last slot, uh, I kind of go back and forth on my on the on the like the third slot, like it's pretty flexible. But I really like the Green Turtle Talisman to raise that stamina recovery speed. One of the worst things when you're playing a strength build is you're running around and dodging and dodging and dodging, and by the time that the boss's opening is finally available for you to go hit, you swing once and then you're out of endurance or you're out of stamina and then you just get smacked by the boss because you've ran out and you have none to actually dodge away now there is something that you can do about with that with ashes of war with bloodhound step which we're about to talk about in a second uh but let's talk gear the most important thing to understand about armor on a strength build is your poise now poise in elden ring acts as your ability to not get staggered or hyper armor through attacks for example, if you start swinging your axe and a attack hits you, it could prevent you from finishing that swing, aka you've been staggered, aka your poise wasn't high enough. In order to avoid getting staggered, anything between 0 and 50 won't really do too much. You're still going to be getting staggered. Anything above 50 is where you start to really experience hyper armor and able to go through attacks or get hit and still connect. That is really, really strong. Um, and if you want to do that, 
I recommend using a heavy armor set and using Bloodhound Step on your weapons, Ash of War, so that you don't have to rely on rolling, and that way you can just kind of tank things as well as not get staggered and follow through on all of your attacks. Um, that is a really cool way of doing it. Uh, one of the ways that I have been enjoying, though, is just going more of a absolute full damage setup. Now, one of the pieces of gear that you wanted for this is the Raptor's Black Feathers. This increases your jump attack damage by 10%. The way that I play this build is I jump on enemies and I try to one-shot them um, is kind of what I go for. So that 10% damage for me is a little bit more important than being able to fall through on attacks, except for maybe on bosses. On bosses, sometimes it's nice to have that stagger. Um, so there's like a lot of really cool sets that you can wear. The Clean Rot set is a really solid set. Royal Remains is an all right set. Uh, the Omen Smirk Mask is a really nice mask for plus two points into strength for free. Um, it's kind of up to you. There's a lot of options. I've just been rocking this set just because I think it looks cool, but the poise at nine is, is pretty terrible. Um, but once again, I don't really see huge returns unless I get that poised to at least 50. So uh, a lot of the times I'm not getting that unless I'm wearing super heavy armor and then I'm gonna have to change my gear or in my Ashes of War to Bloodhound Step. So use what you like, but I hope that explains poise to you and why it's important for a strength build so that you can hyper armor through attacks or go for less armor and then just kind of go for more damage. For our weapons, I'm using the Giant Crusher Hammer and the Inferno Crozier. Now, the Giant Crusher is the best strength weapon I've found on my playthrough. And when I go through New Game Plus, I'm going to pick up another one of these and dual wield or power stance two of them. However, in the meantime, I'm using the Inferno Crozier, which doesn't get quite as good strength scaling, but it still hits like a truck. Now, the Ashes of War that I'm using on these weapons is the Royal Knight's Resolve. Now, this is going to give me 80% increased damage on my next hit. And... The way that I like playing this build is I'll buff both of these. This lasts eight seconds. So it's not until your first attack. It lasts eight seconds. And as you can see, it's already gone away and it'll go away on my other hammer now. So your window to do this attack is short, but you can buff up both weapons and then hit. And when you do both weapon buffs and then do a jump attack with our other talismans to increase jump attacks with our 80% damage increase, um, you'll one shot just about every enemy in the game, except for bosses. For bosses, we get usually around like 60 to 80% of their HP a lot of the times, which is absolutely crazy. It's so much damage and it's why we're able to play more of a like glass cannony uh, kind of strength build to just kill bosses as fast as we possibly can. Now, there are two other good Ashes of War that I wanna recommend to you. And the other Ashes of War that are really nice for strength builds, there's two of them. The first one is the Heavy or the Crag Blade. By the way, I'm scaling my affinity of my weapons to strength to get the most scaling out of my strength stat because that is the stat that I'm mainly going to be investing into damage. And the other one is Bloodhound Step. Now, for the Crag Blade, I found it to not be worth. Um, the reason I say that is because this is a 10% damage increase from my testing and it doesn't last that long and windows for bosses aren't that open you with strength builds don't get to like wail on an enemy for a long time you usually get about two or three hits in and the 10 percent on those two or three hits was not worth it to me versus an 80 percent damage increase on my heaviest strongest most powerful attack the other ash of war that's really nice is bloodhound step now i've mentioned this a few times during this video but you're able to put on super heavy armor that would make you fat roll and now with bloodhound step instead of having to fat roll you you can just use Bloodhound Step to get around and dodge bosses. The reason I don't like this as much is because, one, I needed to invest into the mindset to use it properly because as soon as you run out of this, then you're stuck with fat rolling. So I needed to use more mana flasks and use more mindset. And for me, I wanted to really just focus on my strength and my damage and hitting as hard as I possibly could. Uh, so that is the way that I have been playing this build. But if you want to use super heavy armor and bloodhound step, that is also another viable way to play a strength build. And lastly, for our damage rotation in our physic, we are using the green burst crack tier for more stamina recovery speed and the stone barb crack tier for stance breaking. Now, stance breaking is a specialty with hammers, specifically dual hammers. You're going to do a ton of poise damage. And when we use our physic, 
we're going to deal more stagger damage, aka when we hit enemies with our hammers, they're going to go into that kneeling state where they, they, they can then be crit or just hit even further. And some of the hardest bosses in the game can be made a lot easier when they're constantly being staggered and can't really fight back. So that's the way that I like to use the hammers. In addition to that, one thing that you can use if you have 15 faith or have 10 faith and a two fingers heirloom, it's going to allow you to get to 15 faith, which allows you to use the incantation flame grant me strength. Now this is a 20% damage increase, not only to fire damage, but to physical as well. So my rotation for my damage, let me just drink one of these real quick. My rotation for my damage is I do flame grant me strength, which is going to be a 15 second buff. Then I'm going to buff both of my hammers for an eight second buff. Now I have uh, eight seconds to go and just hit something really hard with both hammers. That's where the huge damage increases from the flame grant me strength, our physic, and also our double buffed 80% damage hammers allows us to absolutely destroy things. So I'm no speedrunner. I'm not trying to tell you how to beat the game in 30 minutes, but I do want to tell you how to get a very strong start on a strength build and how to get the items that I used in this build video. So when you first start the game, you're going to start at the first steps. One of the best places that you can come when you start the game is to the Dragon Burt Ruins. There you can open up a chest, which is going to transport you all the way into Kaled. You'll land in Kaled, where you'll land at the Celia Crystal Tunnels. You can go grab the Radagon Sword Seal from Fort Faroth super early, which will give you those strength increases. And you can also go get the Guts' Great Sword from a wagon. It's super easy to pick up. And already there, you've got an amazing weapon to start the game with, and you've already got a really good seal. That is such a strong start uh, to a strength build. Then you can do the little skip jump through the bridge. If you jump, if you take the broken bridge, you can just jump over into the Lyurnia area, where if you make your way all the way over to the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, you can get all the stones or the Bell Smith stones to start upgrading your weapons already to a plus six, I believe. Off of just the first two smithing stones, you'll get a ton of good stones there. And also while you're in Kaled, you can do the marble farm or make the like knight rider enemy, just jump off the bridge. And there's the dragon there to kill for 72,000 runes. So you can have over 100,000 runes when you first start the game and get the Guts' great sword and be able to level it up to plus six super early. And then you can start destroying some of the early game bosses. Also, the wheel that you ride in the Rey Lucaria area, if you instead of going up it, go down it, you will fall into an area where you'll find a Virgin Abductor. The Virgin Abductor will take you to the Volcano Mirror. If you die to it, if you like die in its little chamber thing, it actually just teleports you to the Volcano Manor, where you are spawned in a super easy area to go grab Royal Knight's Resolve. Then you have Royal Knight's Resolve, two great swords, fully upgraded, jump talisman, Radagon, Sora Seal, and can go just decimate uh, Renala, the boss. Once you do that, then I recommend making your way up the Grand Lift of Dectus or going the way of the Magma Worm up to the Atlas Plateau. From the plateau, you're going to want to go straight, get to the Outer Wall Phantom Tree spawn point, and then go southeast to get your first hammer. This is where the Giant Crusher hammer is. And then go back to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill. You can then go up to the Windham Runes and take the river route from the Windham Runes straight directly to Fort Laid, where you will find the Crozier Hammer. Now you've got your two hammers, you've got your Knight's Resolve, and then you can go um, from back where this Outer Wall Phantom Tree is, go back to it, then go to the Sealed Tunnel. You can get the next Smithing Stone or the Bell Smithing Stone to get both of your hammers up to like plus 12s or plus 13s, which is another, like, you're going to be absolutely cruising through things with those, um, plus Royal Knight's Resolve. To get the Great Jar Talisman, you're going to want to come to Siofer River. In the Siofer River area, at the end of it, there is a Stone Sword Key Elevator. You need two Stone Sword Keys, and the elevator will take you back into Kaled. In this area, you'll have to run up to a giant jar, and in order to get the Great Jar Talisman, you need to summon three NPC invaders and beat all of them without dying. Now, warning, these NPC invaders are copies of player builds that had beaten this area before. So you're gonna be going against people with Moonvale Katanas or people with like 
dual great swords. It can be very, very difficult. So if you're struggling with it, I do recommend turning on offline mode, which will fight much, much easier characters. But I did struggle on that for a while, but the Great Char Talisman is one of the best items for a strength build. So I do recommend picking that up. And that's going to give you a really, really strong start to a strength playthrough. Uh, you're going to have those two hammers. You're going to have Royal Knight's Resolve. You're going to have them upgraded. And for the other things that I haven't mentioned grabbing along the way, uh, just because there is a lot of things that you'd want to grab, uh, if you go over to the Sage's Cave, I'm sorry I don't have my map fully filled out. Uh, basically, from the Erd Tree Gazing Hill, go backwards, actually, um, and you'll get to the Sage's Cave, which is on the lower level where the dragon kind of shows up. It's by the woods there. Sage's Cave, you can get the Raptor Cloak, which is the 10% damage on your jump attacks, as well as some other things that I missed. The Summon Water Village, you can get the Green Turtle Talisman here. It's in a little, like, hidden under area is the Summon Water Village. For the Crag Blade, you can come to the Impassable Great Bridge. It's actually right next to the uh, Grace or the Bonfire. Uh, you just go up the hill, and there's some giant swords, and you'll see, like, kind of a hidden beetle that will drop you the rag blade if you want to use that as your ashes of war um and yeah that is gonna be it for the video i hope this gave you guys an understanding of not only how to start a strength build but where to go with it and some cool items to pick up for it strength has been a lot of fun i've actually been having an easier time going through the game on strength than I did with my early faith build. Faith gets ridiculously strong later, uh, but strength early on has been really, really good for me. And so I hope this guide helped out. If you did learn something new from this video, I really do appreciate you taking the time to just drop a like on the video. I will catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace. I was putting